Amen. Amen. Okay, so we are part of the continuum. Doesn't that sound amazing? It sounds amazing. So there's still more to come. Now, um, we'll walk around with microphones or you guys can just shout it out. But what's your favorite like movie series that has like a bunch of different ones? Does anyone have a favorite? Creed? Creed? Okay, yeah. Fast Creed has... and Furious. Now, is Creed done or is there going to be another one? There's going to be another one. Okay, I haven't seen two or three. What is it? Oh. Spider-Man. Yep, that's a great Spider-verse. series. Like lots of, but somebody said Fast and the Furious. Do y'all watch those? Okay. 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 Fast and the Furious 14. What about y'all? What about Indiana Jones that's Ooh. coming back out? Dun, dun, you guys dun, can talk to your parents about dun, it. Dun, your dun, grandparents. Dun, your grandparents. Dun, exactly. Dun, um, okay. What about Rocky? Okay. Y'all, Peyton's dad. Oh, that's Creed, though. Is that considered? It's almost like Creed starts its own generation. All right, yeah. what you got? What you got? Hmm? Oh, my, Trey's turning his mic on. Just Stand by. Moment. Go again. Uh, Avengers? Yeah, nice. It's a great one. Nice. <laughs> right when it goes quiet. Okay. Fast. Go ahead. No, I just thought it was awesome when it got quiet. She just, she's like, now's my chance. Fast and the Fears was disappointing. That was awesome. Well, the thing about it is, oh, oh, I know another one. What, say, say one. Narnia, yeah. Which one? Oh, yeah. They go on and on and on. Uh, what about um, uh, Transformers? Ooh. Transformers has a lot. Jurassic has a Jurassic lot. It's like they keep world. going. They keep going. They keep going. Okay? Guys, you're not supposed to get to a, a destination on this side of eternity. I want you to write this in your notes. It's not on the screen. Heaven is the destination. So, guys, until we see him face to face, you never graduate discipleship. You never graduate continuing to learn more about the Father and his plan. Because what you know right now is good for now, but you're going to need more knowledge by, by the time you get to be our age. When it's time to do what God has called us to do, wh- when you're our age, you're going to need different information, right? Facts. So heaven is the destination. There is still more to come. Everyone say the first church. The first church. Say, I am the first church. I am the first church. See, the first church continued, Acts 2, 42 says, they continued in the doctrine. So you don't stop at children's church. You don't stop in middle school. You don't stop in high school. You keep going in every season of your life. I want you to say this after me. There's more. There's more. In Nehemiah 4, 1 through 6, it says, and this is so important because ultimately, and I don't have that paper for whatever reason, Nehemiah isn't on my paper. Nehemiah 4, and I was actually reading these um, verses earlier today with um, interns. Let me just, let me just yeah. give you the short version, guys, that they had in their heart to work. Everyone say work. Work? There's work to be done It's Nehemiah 4, verse 6. I'm just going to read that one verse. Nehemiah 4, 6 says, So built we the wall, and all the walls was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Say, a mind to work. A mind to work. Guys, you've got to reject laziness, which is tied to selfishness, aggressively. Aggressively. Because you cannot accomplish something great without work. That's right. It's not going to happen. You could sit on the couch... Right. Nothing will happen except if you eat potato chips, you'll get fat. Right? Nothing great is going to ha- happen without putting forth effort. The Bible talks yeah. about he will bless the work of our hand. hand. Right? So we're, we're going to work. We're going to be yeah. diligent. We're not going to be lazy. As a matter of fact, we're going to fight against laziness, laziness with every fiber of of our being. Can I get an amen? Amen. Mm. So you have to possess an, possess an attitude that says, no matter what, like I'm going to get it done. And guys, if inside of you, and if you go to the co-op, you have such a huge advantage because you have the mind of Christ. So in years past in youth ministry, I would say, if, if your best is a C, then make a C, don't make a D, you know, but right. it's like, you're in a, in an opportunity now where it's like, no, your best is no less than a B. Right. And some of you guys have risen to that challenge and you realize, gosh, there's more in me 
than I actually ever even put forth effort towards because now you're required to do it. And guys, that's a good thing. It's a good thing to not be lazy and to demand of yourself the excellence and the best because that's how God made you. He made you as kings and priests. Um, let's go in our Bible to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter 2, verse 9. Say, I know who I am. I know who I am. Remember, we've looked at, and we'll throw it up there for you because it's such a good reminder. We've looked at the Princess Diaries before and the fact that what is happening in middle school and in your discipleship is that you're becoming who God made you to be. And you may not look like you're going to look. You may not be acting like you're going to act. But you are who he made you to be right now, and you just got to put in a little bit of work. Everyone say a little bit of work. A little bit of work. Turn to your neighbor and say a little bit of work. A little bit of work. First Peter 2, 9, and it's towards the back of the Bible. So I'll give you a second to find it if you haven't already found it. First Peter 2, 9. You got to know who you are. So while you're, while you're looking for First Peter 2, 9, let's throw up Princess Diaries. So there's the before and the after. All things are possible. Say that with me. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. That's right. All things are possible. Right? Just a little bit of discipleship, a little bit of help, and what's going to happen? You're going to become everything that he made you to be. Um, really fast, Sierra, what I want to do today, if we have them in the, the filling station, um, and Jasmine, you may be able to help her find them. I would like to give away some Bible tabs. Who would Ooh. like some Bible tabs? Ooh, can I okay. borrow the Nehemiah Who said, one? oh my gosh, over here? You. Okay, you're definitely getting some. Bring all the Bible tabs. It's like, I'm going to give all of them away. Because I can do not want... Can anybody let want... me borrow the Nehemiah tab? Seriously, I need the Nehemiah tab. It took me forever to find Nehemiah. Can I borrow your Zephaniah tab? Zephaniah, exactly. Let's, okay, one, two, there's a lot of people that need Bible tabs. Now, I don't know how many we have today, but we're going to, could someone put on a wrap? We need to order the Bible tabs. Okay, oh, you want me to no wrap? child left behind. Get some more tabs. All right. So, I want you to say this after me. Faith is an act. Faith is an act. Guys, we don't just believe it, but we have to act on it. That's right. Okay? So when we're going to read this verse, we're going to have to read it and then change our life. Everyone say, change your life. <laughs> I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I'm changing my life today. I'm changing my life today. Ch I'm changing my life today. Change Tell your other neighbor, life. I'm changing my life today. I'm changing my life today. Okay, so that means when you leave here, you're going to do something different. Oh, wow. Okay. Can you put it on your wrap to yes. order more tabs? Nike. All right, I have. Oh my goodness, shut up. Yeah, do we need to check these out? What do we do? How do we check these out? I'm giving all these away, Jasmine. Okay, guys, we're starting with the guys. I only have three. Z Nike gets one for sure. Okay, I, see, I'm done. Nathaniel gets one. And then I don't know. I feel like, yes, you in the red shirt. Tell me your name. Lucas. Lucas. Nice to meet you. I'm Charity. So good to meet you. Okay. Bible tabs for everyone. Now, baby, do you have a Bible, Lucas? Okay. Boom. Okay, perfect. Got it. So that's your Bible. Perfect. Okay, now you have Bible tabs for your Bible. Okay, girls. One, two, one, two three, four, oh, five, my goodness. six, seven, eight. We have eight. We have eight. Um, give these to Sasha, please. Y'all, Sasha is like... When she was little, I was just like, I wanted to kidnap her. But like, tell her mom, like, make her mom. I'm going to raise her. I love her a lot. I love all of you guys. But okay. These okay. are beautiful. Back row, you have glasses. Yeah. And amazing braids. How long did that take? Fast and Furious hater. Oh, I get it. Fast and Furious friend. Hater. Melinda's daughter. Tell me your name. What's, is your mom's name Melinda? Is your mom's name Miranda? You, yes. yes. Dana. Dana? Dana. Dana's daughter. She looks like Carrasco, but she's not. Okay, I love you. Does anyone know who I'm talking about? Okay. Dana's daughter. You're getting some. 
Okay, babe, I've really been putting in work here. This yeah, is, you have. So I feel like you have four left. Got it. I'm on it. I don't feel like Zoe's hand could get any higher, honestly. It's like, please don't pop your arm out of socket, okay? Like, I just, I need it in there. It's going to be weird. It's going to be weird. You and I. Look at that. Look at that. Guys, we're going to order more, okay? Daily Grace. I have like a pending PO in fair right now with journals, so I just need to add the Bible tabs. That's what I would have done. All that hard work. I couldn't, I couldn't decide. There was too many of them I could see I'm in their eyes. You. They wanted it. And her arm's like, my arm hurts. She did have it up the whole time, though. I saw some people, they were like about it, and then they weren't about it, and then they are about it. So I just, I couldn't decide. There's too many of them that were all in. You're so true. It's, it's happened. Okay, hey, first we rejoice, Peter 2, 9. We rejoice with those who rejoice. And patiently wait for more to come in. Amen? All right, First Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen. Everyone say chosen. Chosen. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness and into his light. Guys, who would be graduated out of second grade and go back into it? No. Why would you want to do that? You, wouldn't. you have been called out of darkness, so don't go back into the darkness. Now, it might be weird to navigate the light because sometimes you might feel like nobody else is doing it and you're left out, but you're not left out. You're not left out. The whole reason why we're celebrating Blake Trinan today is because he took a stand for the gospel. He took a stand as a professional athlete. So you're not the only one. And not only that, he doesn't have Instagram. He had a friend post it for him. He how didn't many, even get an Instagram to post it. How many of you guys could see yourself taking a bold stand like that in the future? Do it. Okay. So, so it actually starts by taking a bold stand now, right? And so you're going to have opportunities every day to kind of be passive yep. or to be bold. Show him the picture, you guys, of his family with the trophy. I like that Aww. one. Um, so you have an opportunity now to take a stand, okay? You've been called out of darkness. They didn't, they didn't have that. Oh, sorry. You were called out of darkness, so don't go back into it. Well, everyone makes fun of you. Who cares? Who cares who makes fun of you? You are royalty in Christ Jesus. You have a whole family of believers in here. Who cares what people think? Right. Just be bold. Just be bold and say, you know what? I apologize. You don't like the life I live. I like it. I enjoy it. It's awesome. You have you know, bad taste. You have bad taste. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, you've got to be bold. And bold doesn't mean that you're rude, but you can't be all, like, sad and, like, I'm just missing out. You're not missing out on anything. You're missing out on heartbreak. You're missing out on regret. You're missing out on, like, future missing teeth. You know what I mean? Like a life of addiction, a life of drugs, a life of alcohol abuse. That is not a good life. A life of serving money is not a good life. Ooh, a yep. life of serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is a great life. Everyone say a great life. A great life. So you are a choice, chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What good is light that's not on display? What's good is light? What good is light that's not turned on? No good. So you have to turn on the light of your life every day before you leave your house. Some of you have to turn it on in your house because the people that you live with don't know what you know. 
Don't be intimidated by that. Use that as an opportunity to be an influence, to love them enough to tell them the truth. Does that make sense? Totally. So faith is revealed. Fill it in in your booklet or your, in your paper. Faith is revealed in an act. Abraham had to act on what God had told him. Right. <laughs> God told Abraham he was going to be a father of many nations. So if you are royal, what do you, what what has he told you? Faith is revealed in an act. That's your blank. Faith is revealed in an act. All things work together for the good of y'all and y'all's PowerPoint right now. Okay. Just stay in faith with us guys. Faith is revealed in an act. Look at that faith. Look at faith in God. Everybody say, everybody say an act. So, so if you're royalty, you have to act like it. So many people are like waiting on God. Yeah. And he's given us his written word, number one, and the still small voice. So there's things that we can do right now to move things forward in our life. So many people want things to move forward, but they don't want to do what it takes to actually move their life forward. So each and every one of us, we have what it takes right now. Everybody say, I'm not waiting on God. I'm not waiting on God. Amen. Have you guys ever played Mario Kart? Legendary. Okay, so when, when the little, little bird comes and the little light goes from red to yellow to green, what do you do? Floor. You go. Man, I pull that lever as hard as I can so that I can go, right? Guys, every promise that God has in his word, you have a green light for. Go. Go for healing. Go for peace. Go for joy. Go for blessing. Go for friends. The Bible says he'll give you the desires of your heart. He who shows himself friendly will have many friends. Every promise in God's word is a green light. But he, he, like, just because that little bird shows up and says red, yellow, green doesn't mean that I go. I have to activate my motion myself. Mm -hmm. Faith is an act. Your faith has to be activated. It moves, here you go, write it this way. It moves from your mouth, excuse me, from your heart to your mouth to your feet. Faith has to move. It moves from your heart to your mouth to your feet. So you can just draw a little arrow, like faith, arrow, heart, arrow, mouth, mouth, arrow, arrow, feet. feet. If you draw, you could draw a heart, a mouth, and a feet, foot. (laughs) Y'all, that would take me three days. Call me back on Tuesday. I'll still be drawing my foot. My toes will be all weird looking like, what are they called? The crudes? Does anybody find it hard crudes, to draw those crudes people i promise you my feet Does anybody find like it hard to draw crudes feet can i have a picture of crudes it's feet? like when you start you're like this is gonna be so awesome and then when when you get done it's like this is very nice y'all awesome. i tried to like draw something in my quiet time because i'm very visual and i was like writing my thinking journal and i saw it so cool in my mind and, and so i just started like drawing it and i was like this is so when weird. it gets can, on paper then it's like uh, it's like i'm not good at drawing. okay uh, other side of the coin who actually when you see something in your mind can kind of put it on paper Wow. God bless America and all of Amazing. you artists. So cool. Amazing. Okay, so faith is an act. Faith has to move from your heart to what? To what? Your mouth to your feet. Okay, where does it start? In your heart. Mouth. Feet. Say it again. Heart, mouth, feet. So when you come to church, I'm working on your heart. I'm not working on your feet. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Keep those feet covered, okay? No one's working on your feet. Okay, I'm not working on your mouth, but let's have some mints. Let's have some good breath. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you man. walk up to people with like middle school, little Cheeto breath, little hot Cheetos everywhere. Hot breath. Okay, where is it? Heart, mouth, feet. <laughs> yeah, catch my toes looking like that. <gasps> exactly. Where's the other one? What happened to her toe? <laughs> it's it's. Uh, it's sad. She needs a pedicure. She or got chopped off. She needs prayer. She needs her toe to grow got out. Got caught in a bear trap. She needs her toe to grow out in Jesus' name. Okay. Now, run it back. Y'all were supposed to show a picture of Blake a while ago. Do we have the Blake picture yet? Okay. There Blake we show. go. Look at that. Sweet family. It's adorable. Okay. So anyway, that's Blake. You can go to 500 level and you can buy athletes shirts that don't have their team on it cuz i'm not listen i'm not repping the dodgers look at those little girls with their glasses for me baseball like is only yankees some sassy but i like this guy that's some so sassy i can wear attitude. his thing without repping any dodger paraphernalia so anyway 500 levels website um, okay so there's that that we were discussing taking a stand and then the faith has to move guys when you come to church we're working on your heart 
That's why there can't be any strife. Because if your heart is full of offense and strife and jealousy, the word won't get in. That's why I've just politely asked, if you have issue with anybody in this room, please don't come in this room until you can fix it. Because you can't just sit here and be fake with this. Exactly. Amen? A- so the only cure Amen. for the disease of uncertainty is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I just don't know what to do. Well, have a relationship with God. Because the word has an answer. Remember, the word always has a, has a green. Go. I don't know how to be more popular. Well, the Bible says that you will increase in favor and wisdom with God and man, just like Jesus did in Luke 2.52. So just start confessing, I have favor, and I, I'm a great friend, and I have many great friends. Dad, just nobody likes me. The more you say that, the less you're right. I don't like you either, actually. Right. Don't talk to me about how many people don't like you. I just decided I don't like you either. I actually did like you, but you just kept but talking and yeah, I changed my mind. Yeah, you just kept being so whiny. Nobody wants to be around whiny, insecure, right. drama people. Which is why the Bible says Always if you mad. want well, you a hurt friend, my feelings. show yourself friendly. I didn't hurt your feelings. I just merely said, I don't want to eat McDonald's. Could we go somewhere else? We always go there. Like, but I like McDonald's. Gross. Hey, McDonald's breakfast. The hits. only cure for the disease of uncertainty is... I actually is have a petition in the lobby for them to go back to all-day breakfast. Anybody sign that? I would. Sometimes I just stay up till 3 a.m. So they it's can, the worst so to try to breakfast. stay up until 3 a.m. It's worth it, though, when you get that hot McGriddle. Have you been doing that and not telling me? No. Do I look sleepy? <laughs> Do I look sleepy like I've been sitting up until 3 a.m.? <laughs> Yes. Okay. The only cure. Everyone say only cure. Only cure. Well, I just don't know what to do. You need to have a relationship with God. There is something excellent in each of us. That's what Jeremiah 29, 11 says. That's right. For I know the thoughts and the plans that I think towards you to give you a hope and a future with an expected end. Say, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. And that's not like you by yourself, but the greater one in you right. is awesome. The greater one in you is awesome. Everyone say Awesome. Awesome. So it's your job to be faithful with the written word so that he can show you the awesome gift that's inside of you. Right. And guys, sometimes we get so busy. Pastor Greg didn't start singing until he was already in college. And he didn't start working with instruments until later in high school. He did a lot of other stuff that if he could turn back time. If he I could s- turn back time. Don't you know he would have spent more time on those gifts that actually matter? Facts. Does anyone care that you like ran track good? No. Nope. Does anyone care that you were good at football? No. no. I mean, not that we're against those things, but they're not like, that's not the deal. That ain't the deal. That's not the deal. He could have been working on some of those gifts at an earlier age, right? I started preaching when I was in fifth grade. And it shows. I started preaching when I was in fifth grade, bottom line. A couple little kids are running around. We're in a room. It's supposed to be a prayer meeting. We're just supposed to hang out. No, we're not hanging out. You guys just became my students. I'm going to be your teacher. That's why you're our favorite preacher. so it began. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you guys need to realize that it's important to get to know the God gift in you now and not wait. Not wait. If you know you're called to the ministry, don't ever miss an outreach night. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're out of town. You understand what I'm saying. But you need to be here. You need to be here. You need to practice winning souls. You need to practice communicating your faith. If you know you're called to help and to advance the church, you need to make yourself available to serve. You need to go through all of our take root classes. How many of you guys served first service today? Stand up if you served. What? Look at all these servants of the most high. Wow. That's so awesome. That's what matters in eternity. Serving matters. Say serving matters. Serving matters. But you've got to go through the classes. We have to get to know you. We can't just put you back there in a room when we don't know you. Getting to know you. So all the classes are all about us getting to know you. Right? Some of you may not have been scheduled this month, and so you're, you're seating, but you do serve. That's right. awesome. Right? So we're getting to know. You can sit down. You're getting to know who you really are now. Don't wait until uh, 18. You wasted all this time. You had 45 different boyfriends, 75 different crushes. You know, like lots you tried it all. Lots of soul ties. You tried it all. You got this much of your heart left. Because you gave it all away. Less than the Grinch. Instead of just saving it up for that person, you gave it all away. Listen, guys, it's important that you get a revelation of what we're telling you about your significance. Amen. Because when you understand your value, then you live differently. Yep. How many of you have ever gotten like a new 
something and you like we're like so excited and you took really good care of it. Maybe it's a phone, maybe it's a new game, a Nintendo Switch, right? How many of you have ever had a broken phone before and you're just like throwing it to your friend, no big deal? Why? Because the screen's already broken, you don't care anymore. It's no yeah. longer that big of a deal. When you understand how important your life is, you carry yourself differently. And when you understand that God literally created excellence for your life, then you go through life and you say, no, I refuse to settle for anything less than God's best for my life. Physically, financially, yes, soulishly, relationally. What, what does that do? That gives you a vision for plan A. Everybody say plan A. Plan A. So we're a, putting that inside of you today. A characteristic of strong faith, everyone say strong faith. Strong faith. Is your ability to give glory to God no matter what. Everyone say no matter what. No matter what. None of these bad days. Well, I just had a bad day at school. Get over it. Get over Turn it. Turn it around and have a good day. Well, they made fun of me. They call me fat face. Okay, well, you know what? It is what it is. Turn you it know, around. You know, maybe your face is fat. Get right. over it. Who cares what haters people gonna, say about haters you? Haters going to hate. Who cares? I'm just having a bad time. Sixth grade was the worst. Okay, well, get over it. you got a new year now. Right. Right? You can't live like that. You've got to pray. The Bible says, let everything that has breath, what? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Not talk about your problems. Not feel sorry for yourself. That doesn't mean that there's not a time where there's prayer and there's accountability. But some people, it's like, there's no way you have a close relationship with God. Because why does your face look like that? Oh, snap. Because when you spend time oh, with him, you start snap. looking like him. Yeah. Right. Right? Isn't that what the little girl said on Miracle on 34th Street, the little boy? Like, how do you know I'm not Santa? Because Santa don't got a grumpy face. Ooh. God doesn't have a grumpy face. And so if you're spending time with him, why don't you look like him? Right. If you can't, if your faith, what do I say all the time? If your faith can't move your face, it can't move your mountain. <laughs> well, I'm just believing God for a brand new truck. I got an idea. Believe God for a new attitude. Believe Let's start God there. for a smile. Okay, let's believe God for a good attitude. Come on. I'm just believing God for my spouse. Why don't you believe God for a better attitude? Let's start there, okay? Because it's not Spacks. time to be married. You don't need to pray for your spouse. You need so to pray for real yourself. Life. We're bringing the heat this morning. You need to pray for yourself. You have a bad attitude. You don't ever smile. You're depressed. Nobody wants to be around you. You're not a happy kid. You're insecure. Let me see some smiles out there. And you can tell because the way you carry yourself. Why are you uh -huh. dressed like that? Cover yourself up. Mmm. Yeah. Come on, PC. A mantle that is received is built inside of you in the form of godly character. Guys, you're going to be called to somebody before you're called to your own. Right. You're going to be called to somebody before you're called to your own. Hallelujah. All right. So, which means if you're going to do anything for God, you got to have character. That means you're the same person behind closed doors. You're not two-faced. You're not a gossip. We need the statement, everybody, in the back. A mantle is received, a mantle there that is, is received is built inside of you in the form of godly character. Everyone say godly character. Godly character. Right? That starts with righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Write it down. Romans 14, 17. Romans 14, 17. It's not in your notes. The kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's confidence, joy, and peace. Well, I'm just so anxious. I was just so nervous. I just, uh. okay. Well, in relationship with him, there's a flow. Yeah. That doesn't mean there's not stuff to do. That doesn't mean that there's not things that get you excited, you know, and you know, okay, this is a big deal, but you do it from a place of peace. You do it from a place of joy. You do it from a place of love. Amen. Amen. The mantle comes as a result of what? These three things, association. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You keep hanging around losers, you're gonna be a loser. You keep hanging around people and they're like, yeah, I don't really believe in God. Then it's only gonna be a matter of time and you're not gonna have your head on straight either. Well, sometimes I feel like a girl if you're a boy. Sometimes I feel like a boy if you're a girl. You keep hanging around people like that, right? And that's not just people, but that's, that's personalities, that's media, right? So you gotta be, be guarded about who you hang out with, who you chill with. Because when you're a part of this house, there's a flow here. There's an anointing here. You're going to be great if you do your part. Amen? Amen? Number two is the environment, the places that you go. You know, some things happen to people because they're in the wrong place. Yeah. You get mugged, you get robbed, you get, you know, you're not, you're not in the place. And the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but the blood of Jesus protects you. That's why I pray over you every single day. The angels of God are encamped around about you, protecting you from all harm. I plead the blood of Jesus over you, but your decisions matter. If you disobey your parents, if you end up in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people, yeah. the, the Father can't protect you in disobedience. 
And so listen, you've we don't be obedient. We don't operate from fear. Right. We don't fear being in the wrong place at the right time. We obey. We, we, we be where we're supposed to be. There's graces for places. When we're in the place that God has for us, there's a grace that comes upon our life. There's a protection that's available for us. Just like when people do very stupid things and act like God had something to do with the consequences. It's like, no, genius. You made choices, and those choices had repercussions. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Right? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. We can choose life. It's been set before us. God literally gives us the answer. He said, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life so that you and your seed may what? Live. Live. Enjoy abundant life. Guys, you're, you're in a place right now where you don't have, like, complete control. But as you get older, like, it's important. Like, we don't hang around carnal Christians. Mm -mm. People that compromise. People that are lazy. We, we, don't, we hang around people that have joy, that have peace. Yes. So you've got to, like, you've got to stay in the flow in the right environment. Because do you know how long I've been in youth ministry? A really long time. Some people get so restless and they're like, well, I'm just bored with my, what I'm doing. You don't need to be bored with your purpose. You don't need to be bored with your purpose. But if you're around negative, draining environments, it'll start to weigh on you. And it's like their bad attitude kind of jumps on you like lice. Ooh. So you've got to protect your environments. No, I'm only around people that uh, like have joy in their life. I'm only around people that have peace because some people are always complaining. Yeah. They complain about everything. They complain about their life. They complain about everything. Right? So your environment matters. As you grow older and you have more control over your environments, you, you don't want to be around people that aren't happy. Number three is influence. The mantle comes as a result of association, environment, and influence. So guys, it matters what church you go to. Some people never step into their calling because they're around small-minded people that keep them small. They've never done anything big, and so they're intimidated by your big dreams. That doesn't work. It matters what church you go to. It matters that you hear the truth. Faith is a result of the word living in us, not the word committed to memory. You want to memorize the word, but guys, you want the word to be alive on the inside of you. So when you go to school or you're around different environments and you have the opportunity to do stuff that you don't feel right about, the word comes up out of you and the word protects you. David said, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. So the word will protect you. It'll be a force to keep you from darkness. So we're to continue our journey of faith. Everyone say continue. Continue. Say it louder, like more bold. Continue. Continue. Colossians 2, 6 says, in the same way you receive Jesus, our Lord and Messiah by faith. Continue. Everyone say continue. Continue. Continue your journey of faith, progressing. Guys, progress means you're not in the same place as you used to be. Right? Everyone say progress. Progress. So we're to continue in our journey of faith. And that means that we are joined together, Hebrews 10.25 says, with like-minded believers. Turn to your neighbor and say, you kind of look like me. You kind of look like me. Turn to your other neighbor and say, you kind of look like me too. You kind of look like me too. And guys, I'm not talking about your actual looks. I'm talking about how you believe. Right. I'm talking about how you believe. Do you know that I'm closer to people who are not my blood family than I was to my blood family when they were alive? Mm. Because we believed the same. Not because we had the same last name. Not even because we had the same color of skin. But because we believed the same. Everyone right. say, believed the same. Believed the same. 1 Thessalonians 3.10 says, For night and day we pray on and on. Everyone say, on and on. On and on. Asking God to let us see you again to fill up any cracks there may be in your faith. Guys, that's why we come to church. So if there's any frustration in your faith, if there's any sin in your faith, if there's any anxiety or sickness in your faith, we can say, okay, here's what the word says. Put the word in that crack. Seal it up. I can't seal up your cracks for you. But I can give you the word and you can do it, right? Hey, this is what you were struggling with this week. Take this word, fill it up with that. So anytime that thing shows up, what do you do? You put the word in it. Mm -hmm. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Remember, where does faith start? Then where does it go? Mouth. Feet. Okay, so it's got to be in your mouth before it's in your life. So quick saying, it's just so hard. You sit down with us and talk about how hard something is. I want to slap you. 
You must fill in your cracks. Y'all, it's, it's just so hard not to look at bad stuff. It's so hard to be obedient. It's so hard. My mom's always just life's so hard. My pace is hard. Why is everything hard? You're acting like you're a moron. You're not. That's right. You're made in the image of God. Well, I've just had a learning disability. Who said that? Who said that? The public school, they make up stuff. Exactly. Well, I just have this problem. You don't have a problem. All you need is faith in God. That's right. Well, I just have uh, autism or blah, 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 whatever. No, what does the word say? Right. What does the word say? By his stripes, you were healed. That's right. Well, I've just always struggled in math. Well, today's a new day. Turn to your neighbor and say, I changed my life today. I changed my life today. Math used to be hard for me and it's not anymore. That's right. Math just got to be so easy for me. I can do math in my sleep, literally. I do math in my sleep. Change your mouth, you change your life. Faith has to be in your heart, then where? Okay, all together, guys. So it's like Nathaniel knows and Hannah. It starts in your... I need more people. Then it goes to your... Then it goes to your feet. There's confessions on our app for teenagers. I encourage you to make them every day. That's faith in your mouth. Y'all, I have several confessions that I make every single day because I need the faith. I need faith in my mouth. I don't need to just read it. I need to say it. So when some situations come up, I'm saying the right thing, and then my life's going to go doo -doo 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 in the right place. Right? I'm going to end up at Choose Life Church. I'm going to end up in youth ministry. I'm going to end up where I'm supposed to be. I just don't know how I got here. I know how you got here. I know how you got there. The word wasn't in your heart. The word wasn't in your mouth. And so you just went along with culture. Because we're going against culture. Have you guys ever seen those money machines? Where you like get in the machine and you try to catch as much money as possible and it's flying everywhere? Guys, that's us without the anointing trying to make a life for ourselves. Struggle. It's like everything's working against Struggle. us. Struggle. But in him, when the word's in your heart, when the word's in your mouth, when the word's in your feet, and because you're doing what he tells you to do, guys, there's going to be a flow. Turn to your neighbor and say, there needs to be a flow. There needs to be a flow. Okay. Now, I want to illustrate this for you, okay, because you have to practice your faith. Everyone say, practice your faith. Practice your faith. Okay. I need Peyton over here. And I need tray, this tray over here, okay? Now, I need you to throw me a good beat or a good song or something, okay? Because there needs to be a flow. Okay, gotcha. Okay? No, that does not count. It has to be from the back. Because, let me, let, me, let me have you repeat this. Say, I practice faith. I practice faith. Guys, you got to practice faith just like you practice anything else. You read the word, you speak the word, you act on the word, okay? Now, what we're about to illustrate is the fact that Trey practices dancing, now, I don't know that Peyton practices dancing, but Peyton, I know she practicing? doesn't practice as much as Trey. Ah, so when this song comes on, ah, it's going to be really obvious. Guys, let me tell you something. There's a day coming when you turn 18. And some of you guys are going to look like this guy in your faith walk. Ooh, Pastor nice. Charity, Pastor Smooth. Greg, I know where I'm supposed to be. Smooth. You still got your virginity. Right. You still got everything Amen. intact. You got all your teeth because nobody's doing meth. Everyone's, no one's smoking weed. No one's eyes are like, crack pipe. no one's, no guys have Nothing. their nails painted. Amen. Okay. So we're manly no men. nails painted for the guys. You know Hallelujah. what I'm saying? Because you're 18 and you practice your faith. You don't want to look like Peyton dancing when you graduate. Okay. But there's going to come a day. Everyone say the day is coming. The day is coming. The day of reckoning. It sounds like something from a movie. Like it's coming. Okay? You guys have some music yet? Wait, is that the... No, it's like, like a Dougie or something. Do you know what I'm saying? Like not a weird random beat. Like, like a song, people. We need like a song. Oh, wait. We might get struck down though. No, just mute the live. Mute... Bring the I knew back. that I could call Peyton up here and she doesn't care. I love you, Peyton. Go, you can go to your seat. Because we all have different gifts. But that would be my is, worst nightmare. Trey has been practicing dancing like that for a long time. So when music comes on, he can just like start moving. When music comes on, it, it looks like I'm like 
Like, what's going on? Like, how many of y'all like to dance on stage? Okay, hands down. How many of you pray every night? Please, God, don't let me have to dance on stage. Really? Wow. Okay, cool. I'm with you. Praise God. <laughs> Everyone say Please this after God. me. I practice my faith. I practice my faith. I'm changing my life today. I'm changing my life today. Faith is in my heart. Faith is in my heart. Faith is in my mouth. Faith is in my mouth. And I act on what I believe. And I act on what I believe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, if you've not made Jesus Christ.